Hello and welcome back to the Linux Panic YouTube channel. I am sat on a roof today for this week's video. And this week's video, we are covering Linux news for the month of June 2024. But first, before we proceed any further into the video, I'd like to thank my channel member, Miss Love. They get early access to videos such as this one right here. And as well as a little badge next to the name that says they support me, so why don't you? Anyway, let's proceed into the video. Linux news this month has been interesting. Moving forward, there's going to be some interesting developments. So, first bit of news I want to cover is Proton support from Valve. Now, I've got a little bit of paper here with stuff on, so just bear with me. But first things first is Valve has released Proton 9.2-9.0-2. Uh, I will leave a link to the article that 95 Linux covered on this. But moving forward, um, as we know, Pro uh, Valve love to work on Valve. Well, Valve love to work on Proton, and it's their equivalent of Wine for gaming on Linux. As we know this, so what Valve have now done is they have brought controller support to Cluster Truck Fallout 4, uh, Fallout uh, 3 Standard and Game of the Year editions as well as Mugsters, Skyrim, Skyrim Special Edition, Tomb Raider, uh, Anniversary, and Tomb Raider Leg Legend Editions. Now, along with this, they've also bought support, or new support, for already existing games. These include Alpha League, uh, Black Desert Online, Freestyle Football R, Heroes Land, uh, Aragon, Sim City 3000 Unlimited, yes, e no matter how hard EA try and kill a game, Valve won't let it happen. As we can see with SimCity 3000. Uh, Warlords Battlecry 3. Battlezone Gold Edition in VR mode. Valve loves their VR. And also Helldivers 2. Now, as we know, no matter how hard you try and kill something, whether it's Sony trying to kill Helldivers 2, or EA trying to kill off the Sims in any form, Valve will go, no, we're not going to let you kill it. And they brought it, and they brought support for it, which is very good. Which is a big surprise. Moving on to the next bit of news. Uh, there has now been a Windows Task Manager equivalent released for Linux. It is called... I can't remember what it's called. I'll leave a link to it in the description. But basically it looks like looks like and works like the Windows Task Manager. Uh, you would get on Windows 10 and 11. It's now available for Linux through the Flatpak uh, managing scheme. So, I hope you enjoy that. It works. I've used it. It's fantastic. Uh, it works as expected and actually gives readout on temperature as well as power usage for both CPU and GPU, which is something that the Windows equivalent does not do. So, that's always good. And now we move on to the last article that I'm covering today, which is Canonical announce first RISC-V laptop running Ubuntu. Now, this was initially covered by OMG Ubuntu, as I'm assuming you can tell. But, and I don't like this idea, but we're going to cover it anyway. So, Canonical are teaming up with a company called Deep Computing, which is a company based in Hong Kong. Uh, they're claiming to be pioneers of the RISC-V architecture with hardware. Uh, this company is, has existed since 2022, so... They're going to have to do something pretty drastic to be classed as pioneers, in my humble opinion. Again, just my opinion. Um, in this, they are actually releasing a laptop with Ubuntu on it. I'll just run over the specs of the laptop here, and then we'll go over the problems with it. So, uh, in this partnership, they are releasing a laptop that is built around the Space MIT a K1 system on a chip, which will have eight cores running at two gigahertz. Uh, the laptop will have a 14 inch 1080p display. I don't know what display type it is, whether it's TN, IPS, uh, mini LED, OLED, QLED, whatever it is, it's currently unknown. Uh, along with that, it will be running with 16 gigs of LPD, LPDDRX, LPDDR4X, so it's two, two generations behind what is currently available. And along with that, it will be built using an entirely aluminium shell. 
Uh, this is designed to give it a premium feel and better cooling available for keeping that raw heat dissipation. Uh, they've, uh, this company called Deep Computing have already made and released a laptop that was made with plastic, so they're going with metal instead to try and improve said cooling and the premium feelness of it. Uh, as well as the Space, T, uh, Space MIT K1, uh, they are also using a GPU which is currently being unspecified. This alleged graphics processing unit will allegedly support uh, OpenCL 3.0, OpenGL ES 3.2, and a Vulkan 1.2. So, basic video processing will be uh, can be done, but whether it can actually do anything more than just that is to be seen. Now, apparently, this also supports uh, encoding or video encoding of the H.264, H.265, uh, VP8, and VP9 uh, encoding. Now, whether it actually does or not, I can't tell you because I don't have hands-on, but... Anyway, we continue onwards in the form of, uh, of ports available on it. Allegedly, it will have I.O. support in the form of two USB 3.0s. Now, not sure if you're aware, but we're now past 3.0 being used as the standard for USB standarding. Uh, apparently, it also has two USB C's. One of these isn't actually a full use one. It may be used just for charging only. That is currently unknown. And it also, it also apparently has a 3.5mm jack and a micro SD card. So this fat, basically small fledgling company can do what big companies can't actually include a headphone jack on things. Shocker, I know. And allegedly, it'll also support Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. Now, I don't know if that is Bluetooth low energy or what, what have you, but it's just, just saying 5.2. And Wi-Fi 6 is the 802.11ac standard. So, it's got basically what everything manufactured in the last two or three years has. So, nothing to write home about there. Now, the problem is with this with this uh, laptop uh, is made between deep computing and canonical is it's going to be using a version of ubuntu a customized version of ubuntu that's going to be released for this laptop the issue with it, the issue is is it's going to be using ubuntu 23.10 that's not the long support version and the support for that runs out in july 2024 so if you're watching this in june next month and it's not even being released yet, so it looks like it may be out of date before it's even released, which is not a good idea. So it's going to no longer be supported after July the 11th, 2024. So it's taken the Windows approach of releasing something that is no longer support is not supported after after the point of manufacture. Uh, there is no solid price for this at the moment. It is estimated to be around about. There's rumours to it's going to be around about nine hundred pounds, so twelve hundred dollars, maybe a thousand euros. Whilst it looks good on paper, and the fact it is a Risk Five processor, I don't think it's going to be worth it. Being honest with you here, it's the idea of it. Yes, is fantastic. Couldn't ask for anything better. But it's the problem being is it's not ready for anything. It's mainly designed to developers because it's going to include a 10 pin uh, GPIO port on somewhere on it that you can easily get access to. It's mainly just designed around developers and the such. So it's not really designed for general usage. Uh, like I said, the graphics processing unit is currently unknown as to what it is, so it's mm, not really worth it, in, in my opinion. There's too many unknowns, and the fact that it's going to be out, out of date before it's even released is the problem as well, because pre-orders for it open up this month in June. So, no, it's going to be out of date way before it's even released, unless uh, Canonical decides to work with Deep Computing and release it using Ubuntu 24 
for long term support it's going to be out of date way before it even hits the market so taking the windows approach out of date even before it hits the market because the second you buy a windows laptop you need to update it straight away because it's already out of date but there we go looks like a decent machine whether it's going to be decent or not is another matter and deep computing logo deep computing's logo looks like a the intel logo from around about 2010 2012 so interesting All right if you made it this far in the video maybe consider hitting the like the button maybe consider hitting the subscribe button if you're not a channel member you can be for little as 99 pence a month i've added that now uh if you want to stick around there's live streams uh every week on saturday at 9 p.m gmt it's lunch from scratch stuff so there's always that to look forward to uh if you like to hit the like button if you dislike to hit the dislike they both seem to work even though you can only see one of them remember when you use linux don't panic i have been nick you have been amazing and i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day goodbye